As we were going through the comment sections, we noticed that you guys really want us to do videos on anime, video games, and comics. So we figured let's combine them all into one video. How? By focusing on something called color theory. Let's dive into it. Color theory is a kind of guideline for the visual arts. We could probably fill an entire season on this subject, but for the sake of time, we'll narrow it down to some basic fundamentals. Although 15th century Renaissance artists were already describing some principles of color theory, the science and artistry of it did not really kick off until the 18th century, when one of the greatest scientific minds of all time started messing around with prisms and the nature of primary colors. Isaac Newton. Scientists and artists have been building on his theory ever since. Whether it's a painting, video game or comic book, color theory is key. So how do designers and artists get the most out of the colors they use? We'll answer these questions by focusing on two important principles of color theory. 1. Light colors can be used to draw attention to something. And 2. Complementary colors reinforce one another and really stand out. Say you're making a video game, like Red Dead Redemption, and you don't want to let your grand landscape's vistas go unnoticed by the player. What do you do? You use the first principle. Light colors draw your attention. Like these snowy mountaintops. See what happens when we make them darker? When looking at an image, whether it's still or moving, our eyes are drawn immediately to lighter colors or hues. That's just how our eyes work. This is something that Dutch artist Hendrik Averkamp knew as well. Notice how the people in the painting go from dark to light? It's almost as if he used a different hue of the same color for each row of people. Just as in this example from the DC Comics Vertigo Fables. The people all the way in the back don't even have color. Some are even left completely white. This creates a sense of depth, and by doing so, the artist draws your attention not only to the main subject, but allows you to appreciate the whole image, enhancing the feeling of immersion in the story. Good visual artists throughout the ages all use this principle. Some of the best examples can be found in Katsuhiro Otomo's 1988 anime masterpiece, Akira. Akira also brings us to our second principle, complementary colors. You've probably seen this thing hanging on the walls of your old art class somewhere. It's a color wheel. In it, we can distinguish the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, surrounded by their secondary colors. Why are they in a circle? Well, if you draw an arrow straight across, you can find their complementary colors. In other words, the color that reinforces them. So, orange is the complementary color of blue, purple for yellow, and green for red. Using these colors together makes each of them stand out more than if they were presented separately. With this in mind, let's look at this self-portrait by Vincent van Gogh, who in a way freed painting from its subjects by focusing on, and experimenting with, the use of complementary colors, and in doing so, paved the way for expressionism. This self-portrait is almost completely built up out of complementary colors. The orange beard, for example, is complementary to the blue background. And you can also find a lot of green and red all over the painting. Now, let's go back to some scenes from Akira. Complementary colors are everywhere, interacting with each other. This is no coincidence, this is a color theory masterpiece. However, putting complementary colors in their purest form next to each other can sometimes be a little overwhelming for the eye, because they demand attention. Therefore, when artists want to be more subtle, they use something called split complements. Instead of using the direct complementary color, they use the next color on the wheel. Like in this example of Vermeer, where the vest is more yellow orange than bright orange. Complementary colors are everywhere. In our paintings, our video games, in our movies, our comics, and our clothes. 
But what do you think? Is this art? Keep letting us know your suggestions for future episodes of Is This Art? Because we read everything. Okay, bye.